let's start with a small exercise, like, just to make sure that you all wake up. Uh, who has a mobile phone? Okay, if you don't have a mobile phone, you can leave the room now. It's fine. Okay, okay. T take out your mobile phone. Can you can you take it out? Okay. Yeah. Can you look at your neighbor, right or left? Doesn't matter. Exchange mobile phones. <laughs> Have you all done that? How do you feel now? Are you still happy? <laughs> okay, you can take back your phone. I have your attention now. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I want to start with with a funny story, actually, and uh, but it really depicts the situation, the the current state of digital or the current state of the internet in in, in the world, and, and and obviously in the MENA region as well. Um, so on a, it was on a normal, av an average uh, weekday, you know, after work. I was watching CNN, and then uh, my, my two, uh, I have a son and a daughter, 14 and 10 years old, they took over the TV by streaming a, presenta a presentation to the smart TV that read 10 reasons why we should buy a hedgehog today. Okay. So, uh, okay, so I said, okay, fine, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll go through this presentation. And effectively, it was a 10-slide deck with 10 very strong reasons and rationales for getting a hedgehog, uh, head, buying a hedgehog as a pet today. Okay. That was about 7 p.m., right? And I'm really looking at, at the story, I was remembering it actually this morning, and it really tells us a lot about the users these days. So it, it tells us a lot about you know, today means instant gratification, so people do not want to wait any longer. It tells us about how, how much access to information do people have. You know, imagine the, the long tail here. Imagine how far they went to find 10 reasons why a hedgehog is a good pet. And actually, on every slide, there was almost, you know, one, one, a video, a YouTube video in, in most cases, that actually, it's a five-minute story on why do you, you need to have a hedgehog, how to clean him, how to do this, how to do that. So first, instant gratification. Two, incredible amount of access to information. They're much more informed. Three, they're in control of their own entertainment. You know, I was just passively watching CNN, and they came in, took over my smart TV, and put, you know, spent 30 minutes you know, the whole process itself was entertainment, you know, let alone, uh, you know, trying to convince me. I think this puts a lot of question as well on the, the, the value of parents, you know, these days. I think our, ed our knowledge edge has gone away, you know, with people, you know, getting, uh, with kids getting that much information. So thankfully, we don't have a hedgehog yet, so it was a good entertainment exercise. But it's really, you know, going back to my point, it really is, a very good explanation of what's happening with the users. So let me summarize. First, people are connected now all the time. There's about 3 billion people connected to the web today. It's going to be 6 billion in about five years. So if you're doing a five-year strategy, assume that everyone in the world will be connected. Okay. There's about 10 billion devices connected to the web today, more than people. And there will be 50 billion in the same time horizon. You know. There will be. Um, today, there is um, internet coverage in most of the world. Actually, there's about 5 billion people today already living under towers of telcos. The problem is that they don't really see yet the value of being on the web. But the moment they get to the web, they see the value and they upgrade. And even and companies like Facebook and Google are also trying to cover the whole world with the internet, uh, with technologies like balloon technologies or drone technologies. So assume that everyone's going to be connected, and everyone's going to be connected all the time. What does that mean? It means that users are in control. Users are using this remote control to control their life, and they're becoming more and more picky in the way they actually live their life. 
And that's not different in MENA. If you look at MENA, there's about more than 150 million internet users today. We're going to be 200 plus uh, in the next two, three years. So that, that's a large number. And at the same time, we're seeing consumption of um, you know, digital consumption in the region is way, way above what anyone would expect. I'll give you a couple of statistics that are mind-blowing. I still don't get them myself. Uh, one of them is, is YouTube. So we have about 500 million views per day in the region, coming from 160 million people. Um, so on average, people are watching, on average, three videos per day on YouTube every single day. And I'm sure many people are watching 20, uh, including my kids. Um, but yeah, um, so that, that's the first thing. The other thing is that if you look at e-commerce in the region, it's still very nascent. But more than 50% of e-commerce activities happening in the region are actually happening through sites that are outside the region. So we're not actually seeing it as an industry. But the users are ahead of us. The users are are actually feeling the deprivation of the service and going and buying ex externally. So what do we do? What are companies doing? I think companies in the region are starting to adopt. So I'm not going to bash companies. Okay, I think there's a lot of companies that are thinking seriously about having a, a good app, a good we mobile website, a good website, etc. Uh, I think mobile advertising has shifted significantly. I mean, internet advertising has shifted significantly in the past, let's say, four or five years maybe by 10 times, actually, and, but we're still very, very, uh, still very low. Because most of this adoption has come from the large companies, and mostly from the large multinational companies. But if you look at the Middle East, we have about 6 million companies in the Middle East. Yes, I agree, some of them are small shops, okay, and corner shops. But all these shops can become big companies. All these companies can become big companies using technology. Technology in the, in the past used to be exclusively available for large companies. Today, technology, technology tools are built for billions from the beginning. Okay? So any company can get access to any type of technology that can make it a multinational company from day one. What, what does that mean? Any company can get on the web and access customers the world you know globally any company can get on the web and you know advertise their product globally from the comfort of their home any company can actually get access to information that they've never been able to get before on the web every customer touch point is a new data point that you can use to improve your service for the next customer so companies that are actually connected on the web are, grow faster and are more successful than companies that are not connected. A recent study shows that companies that are connected to the web grow four times faster than companies that do not. So as we speak ab a lot about entrepreneurship, we speak a lot about, you know, today we spoke about education, we also spoke about um, creating jobs. It's not the top multinational companies that are going to create jobs in this region is these six million companies. And there's a huge gap. The gap is not only in terms of getting online. The gap is really in terms of adopting digital as a major opportunity for change. Okay. Any company in any industry today is subject to disruption. Any industry. Who would have thought that taxis would be disrupted? Who would have thought? Who would have thought that you know, we have a dating pr product now, and we have a hotel uh, product, and we have every single vertical, finance, payment, you name it, media, you name it, every single industry is disrupted. You know, Ernest Hemingway said something about uh, bankruptcy, which applies really, really well to, um, to disruption as well. He said, bankruptcy happens in two ways, gradually, then suddenly. Okay? And, and I think this is what happens. And you know, no one saw, the taxi company did not really see it coming. Okay? But what happened? What actually happened? What happened is that someone said, we're going to solve this user problem. 
we're going to create a seamless experience that delights our users, where users are happy to use our product and, gonna, and recommend it and talk about it and make sure that they love us. Who loved their taxi company before Uber? I don't know. Okay. But, but really think about it. Okay. How many of us in MENA, in the region, are thinking about delighting our users as much as we should? In Google, we do this all the time. And I'll share with you one example. You know, our, our CEO, Larry Page, is an incredible guy. You know, he said, he, he said in, from the beginning in the IPO letter, we are a non-conventional company, and we do not intend to become one. So if you're an investor, you want to invest in our company, you have to accept this. And we are a non-conventional company because we focus on the user, and we always focus on the user. And he said that any user problem is our problem. Okay, so think about Google search. He said if people cannot spell, it's our problem. If people don't understand the language, it's our problem. If people, if the internet is slow, it's our problem. If browsers are not great, it's our problem. People, we, our problem is to make people search on the web, and we're going to solve this problem. We cannot say this is someone else's problem. It's always our problem. How many companies are doing this in the region? There's no solution for this. I think I, I just thought of a couple of tips. You know, every time I see a small company, or I, I try to give them two tips, really. You know, and it's, there's no solution for innovation. I think many people try to articulate how to innovate, the 10 principles and the 15 principles and the nine whatever. You know, you, there's no there's no real uh, recipe, but there's a couple of things that actually work really well, and I've seen them at Google, and maybe they can be transferred to other things. First thing is focus on the user, as I said, same example. The other, one, the other one is actually think transformationally. And I'll refer back to our Larry Page, uh, our, our CEO Larry Page. You know, he, he, he tells us, he challenges us all the time to think in 10x increments. So he tells us, do not think how to improve something by 10%. Think how to improve something by 10 times. Always. Because if you want to improve something by 10%, you would tweak a process here and there. You would maybe you know, use different material. You can always do that. But if you want to tweak something, if you want to improve something by 10 times, you are forced to start from scratch. Okay. Most of the companies that I spoke about in that disrupted their industries did not think about how can we make taxis arrive 10 minutes earlier or 10% or faster. They actually revolutionized the whole industry. Okay. So I don't want to leave on a negative note because I think this is a major opportunity for me now. And I think my, my personal opinion is that digital is, is a fantastic platform for us in the Middle East and North Africa to be to operate at a global scale again, to have something to offer. I think we've always been looking outside and looking for benchmarks and best practice. We are the best practice nations. You know, I don't think we should look for that. I think we should look at the user and really look for problems and try to solve these problems. And if we do this, we're going to solve problems for users in our region that no one else has done because they're in our region and we're going to succeed. Um, I was wondering if an industry that you were, um, you'd be referring to as the ones that you were saying that a platform where we could um, basically solve a problem more globally from the MENA as a platform. Um, would you say that the Digital Health Summit that was held in Dubai um, just a few weeks ago, I was, I'm not sure if Google was participating in it, but I know that one of the ex-Google, um, um, I think one of the ex-Google CEOs was there. Um, would you say that's an industry that we should be looking into, healthcare? You know, health, healthcare is a, actually a major um, focus for Google. Not in our core business, um, just for the sake of everyone, there's something called Google X. Uh, it's, a, it's a division with that within Google that focuses on you know, these 10x sort of activities. It's sort of the, div the division that's doing the self-driving cars, for example, or uh, and many other, and Google Glass at the time, and, and things like that. So one of, one of the initiatives that Google X is doing is what we call Google Life Sciences, okay? And they're looking at um, the, the problems, the, the mission is very simple, is that how can we solve large-scale problems 
using breakthrough technologies in a, and through um, radical transformation. Okay? So there's a couple of projects that came out of this actually already. Uh, one of them was the contact lens uh, that, detects that, that detects the glucose level for diabetes patients. Uh, you just put the contact lens and it connects to an app and the app you know, constantly uh, you know, gives you the information. And we developed the prototype and then we moved it to, I think, Novartis, if I'm not mistaken, to actually develop it and commercialize it. Uh, the other example was on like, early, early detection of cancer, where uh, it's a nanotechnology where nanoparticles would be injected into your bloodstream and they would attach to your cells to detect cancer earlier. So that's also still very early stages. Um, again, thinking about how can we solve human level problems uh, that reaches you know, tens of millions and, and billions of people. Um, uh, let me just uh, close on one thing here. <coughs> you know, Larry, I always refer to Larry because he's a very, you know, very inspirational guy. He always tells us that when you think of new things, think of the toothbrush. You know, he tells us, think of you know, anything that we want to do needs to pass the toothbrush test. Okay, and he said, what's the toothbrush test? He said, and the toothbrush test is, you know, any product that Google launches has to reach at least a billion people, okay? And, 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 and it has to reach, reach a billion people, and people need to use it, let's say, at least twice a day, okay? And, and people need to use it twice a day, but also be useful, okay? So if you can come up with a product that reaches a billion people and that they use it tw twice a day and useful, then you can come and talk to me about it. This is how we, like, this is really the bar that we set. Okay, so I think, you know, this concept with the, with the context of really using breakthrough technology to solve core human problems, you know, make health, healthcare is a very important sector. But of course, we're not going to be a healthcare company. We just demonstrate the technology and then pass it to healthcare companies to take it forward. Thank you very much for your speech. Uh, my <laughs> name is Anirudh. I am a student at LBS. Uh, it was very interesting to hear you speak about the uh, focus that Google has on the end user. Uh, so it would be uh, good to know about how the MENA consumer is different from that of the rest of the world, and what is Google doing to tailor its yeah. content for that end user? Yeah. MENA there's two things where MENA consumers are you know, very, very different from the other rest of the world. The first one is consumption of video. So MENA in absolute value is the largest consumer of video globally after the US, in absolute number of videos. So it's not per capita, et cetera. Okay? Uh, so that's that's one. We love video. We, uh, don't ask me why, but we do. Uh, make your own assumptions. Um, but yeah, we like we like video. Okay. Um, the other one is mobile. So we are four out of the top five most penetrated countries, and from a smartphone standpoint, are from the region. And the fifth is North Korea. You know, of course, North Korea has the reputation, but we also have you know the Kuwait and the Saudi and the UAE and the Qatar of this world and we have the highest levels of mobile penetration. So people in this region, in, in especially in the Gulf region, uh, are mobile first. Uh, so if you're starting an e-commerce company, it's better for you not to build a mobile, not, not to build a site and build a mobile site and then maybe add a website than to do the other way around. And most people to do today actually do the other way around and, and still do so. Uh, so yeah, so the, the answer is mobile first, video first. If you can do video on mobile, it's going to be great. Uh, hi, I'm Saeed Amin from the Tunisians. I'm not sure whether this question will pass the toothbrush test, but I'll, I'll try. Um, how long do you think it would take for a company like Google to emerge from the Middle East? Do you think it's possible? To do what, sorry? How, do you think it's possible for a company like Google to emerge from the Middle East? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, it's, it's a very good question because I was looking at some information yesterday about uh, Europe, not, not the Middle East. Okay. And it turns out that um, Europe is doing really, really well when it comes to, that's mine, uh, Europe is re doing really, really well in terms of companies that, you know, startups that are reaching a billion dollar valuation, okay, from in terms of share of total, total uh, startups. Also, Europe is doing really well, did really well in the traditional global, you know, Fortune 1000, okay. Uh, but w what Europe is not doing really well is that it's not generating a Google or a Facebook, or it's, it's it's generating a lot of billion dollar sort of companies, but it's not generating um, you know 
Now this. And you know, it actually caught my curiosity because I said, why, why, would, why would you be able to reach a billion dollars in valuation or $10 billion in valuation but not be able to reach 200 billion or 300 billion? Okay. We always say, okay, how can we be the, you know, the best in the world? I think we have a lot of baby steps to start with first. Okay. I think uh, e-commerce, for example, is still less than 1% in the region. Doesn't make sense at all. Okay. It should be 10% at least. Um, digital advertising, although it grew by 10 times in the past five years, it's still at 10% <laughs> of total, despite everything I told you, despite the fact that two-thirds of the population are below the age of 20, 35, despite the fact that people are spending more time on digital and mobile devices than on any other medium. You know, there's all these small things that we need to do uh, to, to become more digitally savvy is, are the first steps before we can you know, say we, we need to become the next uh, Google or Facebook. To continue on the point you mentioned now, so what are you doing to encourage entrepreneurship? Um, I know that in London, for instance, you have a program called uh, Advertising Ag Engagement or Agency Engagement, where you train um, advertising agencies to, to use go Google uh, AdWords and Baby Click and stuff. So uh, I was trying to look into the Startup Weekend, which is sponsored by Google. Uh, in Middle East, they had only few programs or bro initiatives, and it's not as much as strong as probably in Europe or in, in, in America. So what are you doing? I think if you do more of that, you think the digital savvy thing you think it might actually reflect on revenues for you as well and increasing of awareness of Google and digital world in general. Yeah. No, I agree. You can never do enough. Okay. So as you, as you said, there's 400 million people in, in MENA and you know, Google will be, you know, we're 100 people right now in, in Dubai. Um, you cannot reach, you cannot easily reach 400 million people or 200 million or, or whatever from in terms of actually getting very close to them and teaching them. So what we do, we try to do scalable activities. Um, so one of the examples that we're doing right now, we just launched it in, uh, in, in Egypt, where we're trying to reach the top computer science students across Egypt and try to give them scholarships to go through an Arabized version of the Android certification, uh, you know, Android fundamental certification, and we're we're Arabizing it, we're putting it on a MOOC platform, and we're trying to make it accessible to everyone as well. Okay, so these are the type of activities that we do to to be able to extend our ext expand our reach. Uh, we also work with agencies, as you said. You know, we work with we, we work with hundreds of agencies. <coughs> our plan now is to work with thousands of them. There's 30,000 digital agencies in MENA, 30,000, more than advertisers, actually. <laughs> so I think we need to speak to them. And no, there's 30,000 agencies and less than 30,000 advertisers in, on digital. So what we need to do, we need to make sure that they're all skilled with digital, certified, we give them the tools to acquire customers and serve them and, and give them the ability to make money as well. Thank you very much.